Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. Today I'll show you a fairly universal setup for the new 121 Autocrafter that I use on my survival server. With universal, I mean I can reconfigure it with a few clicks and maybe a couple of modifications to craft something different. And I use it primarily to craft a few stacks or maybe a few shulkers of items that I don't regularly use. For example, let's say I need a few shulkers of soul lanterns for a project or to fulfill a large order in one of my shops on my server. And perhaps tomorrow I want to craft a few stacks of smithing tables, because I like to use them as decoration as part of my roofs. And perhaps I want to get rid of my backlog of prismarine crystals and prismarine shards. Of course my new guardian farm integrates the autocrafter, I've made a video on this. So it outputs directly sea lanterns and the prismarine bricks and stuff like that. But I still have a bit of surplus of shards and crystals. So I want one setup for a crafter where I can just chuck in the ingredients and get the desired items with minimal configuration. And you'll see that you can do quite a lot of complex recipes with this machine here. Now the crafter is available for 120.4 and later if you install a data pack from Mojang containing the new 121 features. So you can already enjoy the crafter in your survival world if you want it. We've been using the crafter for a few months, so I used it quite extensively. I've created a playlist with all of the autocrafter setups that I used, so check it out if you want to. If you follow the channel, then you know that I designed a factory that allows me to autocraft all of the items that I need on a regular basis. This factory will keep me always stocked on stuff like rockets, shulker boxes, scaffolding, golden carrots, and a whole selection of redstone components. So I don't need to autocraft these with another setup, but I do need a setup for a few items that I will craft now and then. The problem of course is that it's very hard to make a simple setup that can craft everything. Let's just assume we need a ton of deep slate tiles. So we first need to craft cobble deep slate to polished deep slate, then we go from polished deep slate to deep slate bricks, and then from bricks to tiles. So these steps are very simple, but we have three steps. And this is structurally very different from, for example, from crafting soul lanterns, where we need the soul torches and iron nuggets. And typically we don't have iron nuggets, but we want to craft them down from ingots or even from blocks. And of course the torches need to be crafted as well. And of course some items need specialized setups. For example, if you want to craft a dispenser, you will have to craft a bow first. This is a very simple setup but it involves powering the crafters facing into each other in a certain order. So I've covered this in a previous video in my factory auto crafters. But my goal today is to provide one very simple setup that is extremely flexible. But I won't even try to design something that can craft everything. And the setup here in most cases does just one crafting step with the option of crafting ingredients. It's not super fast. but it will craft over one shulker of the output item per hour, and that's fast enough for me. Also, you can chunk load the setup if you like, so it works in the background. Let's look at the setup now, and as an example, we will craft pistons, but later in the video, I will show you how to use this for firework stars, for sea lanterns, for deep slate tiles, and for soul lanterns. But before we get to the setup, Let's consider a stripped down version. It's not as flexible, but it's easier to explain, so you can see what happens exactly. We have a crafter here, and the crafter is pre-filled with all the ingredients that we need for our item. And we have four hoppers going into the crafter, one from the top and three from the sides. And each of these hoppers contains one of the ingredients. So we have iron ingots from the top, redstone dust from the side, cobble from the other side, and planks from the back. These items are fed by four hopper lines in this case, and for each hopper line I just placed a chest on top here. So this one is snaked around and goes to the back. These three go directly into the crafter. The output goes into a container below the crafter and is sucked out by a hopper, so it goes into the chest. And the last side has a clock and we will power a solid block next to the crafter 
And whenever the clock is powered, the crafter will craft one item. And then the hoppers will immediately refill the materials. So we make sure that the crafter always have full stacks of all ingredients. By the way, in this setup I will use gold blocks for solid blocks, blocks that can transmit a redstone signal. I will use glass for transparent blocks. And in rare cases this here has to be a target block so that the redstone connects. But of course you can replace both the gold and the glass with any items of your choosing as long as there are solid blocks for the gold or transparent blocks for the glass. Now to change the crafted items, just deactivate the clock, take out all of the ingredients, pre-fill the crafter again with the new recipe, put in the new ingredients, configure the clock and start the clock. So what's the correct timing you might ask? This depends very much on the item you craft. Now the clock must be slow enough to allow the input hoppers to refill the items. Because if your clock is too fast, then bad things happen. I'll make the clock a bit faster, like so, and observe what happens. The amount of cobble gets lower and lower. Cobble is our bottleneck here. We need four cobble for each piston. So while the input hoppers for redstone and iron ingots can keep up and provide enough of the ingredients, the hoppers for cobble and for planks are way too slow. Now. Let's jump a bit in time. Eventually one slot will be empty and we lose the recipe because other items will go in like so. At which time the crafter simply stops. Now this can be helpful if for example you want to stop crafting if you run out of cobble. But of course if it's just because the clock is too fast then this is a problem. And that's the reason why I used a simple clock because by tweaking the delay on the repeaters you can change the delay on the clock. So Less delay means faster clock, more delay means slower clock. But how fast should we make the clock? You have two options. The simpler one is just observation. So start with any clock and observe if the hoppers are fast enough to refill this. And here the cobble hoppers are not fast enough. So we add a bit more delay. And yeah, this looks good. Now the hoppers can keep up. We are always stick to 60 items so this clock is right. Or if the clock is too slow then you will see that the items are refilled before the next signal comes and the crafter tries to craft again. So then you can just use a bit less delay. And now again it's too fast. So this is just the right time. Option two is math but it isn't very difficult. So you see one hopper transfer one item every 0.4 seconds. And in this recipe, cobble is the bottleneck. We have only one hopper for the cobble. We need four cobble at 0.4 seconds. So this means we should fire this crafter once every 1.6 seconds. Here for this clock, you can think of half pulses. So one half pulse, the clock is off. One half pulse, the clock is on. And the delay to switch is just the total delay of the redstone clock and the repeaters. So each repeater has for each tick 0.1 seconds. So this repeater on four ticks is 0.4 seconds. Now it would be 0.1. And at the delay of the repeaters, in this case, three ticks plus four ticks is 0.7 seconds. 0.1 seconds from the torch. Another 0.1 tick. In, so we have another one tick. So we have eight redstone ticks. So don't confuse this with game ticks. One redstone tick is two game ticks. So we have eight redstone ticks delay for a half pulse or a 16 redstone ticks delay for a full pulse, which is 1.6 seconds. So this is just right. Later in the example, you will see how to configure the clocks. Already you saw what happens if you run out of one ingredient. And in pretty much all of the cases, I don't really put in a stop condition for this because at one point we will just end up with an invalid recipe in here and then the crafter stops crafting. So for example, if I want 10 stacks of pistons, I will just put in 10 stacks of redstone dust and perhaps plenty of all the other ingredients. And once the redstone dust runs out, we will have something like this in here. And this means the crafter stops. There are cases like if you craft sea lanterns where this might be a problem, but again, this works for me. Okay, and now let's have a look at a setup that I would recommend to build, which is just slightly more complicated. And this setup here uses five hopper lines facing into the crafter, which is the maximum we can have. 
we can, can feed the crafter from five sides and have both power and output on one side. So what we do is we strongly power this block. This is a solid block, so it will also power the crafter. And I know only one item that requires five ingredients, and this is a firework star. But even if you don't want to craft firework stars, you'll see that this setup has advantages. Because the other change is that I allow two inputs on the outside, which I can pre-process with the crafter. Or I call this decompression lines, because in pretty much all of the cases, I will do something like craft birch logs to planks, or I will craft iron blocks to iron ingots, which is kind of a decompression. So the outside two are decompression lines. The inside lines go directly into the crafter. So let's see how it works. Maybe on this side, this is easier to see. In this chest, we have the compressed items, in this case, the birch logs. They go into a crafter. The crafter faces into another chest. And this chest has a certain fill level. And we read this chest with a comparator. And here we have a clock. So if I just take out some items, this comparator gives a lower output. The signal does not reach here. And the clock activates and the clock will craft more planks and fill up this chest. Let's take out again something. So it will fill up the chest until the signal strength is once again three. And once the signal strength is three, it will power this repeater and therefore this block and this redstone torch is off. So the clock is stopped. So if the chest has this fill, fill level, we will stop crafting. And the same happens on the other side, except that it's a bit more hidden under the input chests. And then the items, of course, go directly into the crafter. So the two lines on the outside are the decompression lines or the pre-processing lines. And the items from the middle lines will go directly into the crafter. And here at the bottom, I've made an off switch. So if the signal of this chest reaches 15, so the chest is completely full, then this block will be powered, we will have a power here, and the clock will be stopped. So normally, also here's the on-off switch, but normally you will craft, but as soon as this chest is full, the crafting will stop. And this is the version that I will work with in this video. But I gave you another version, a third version, and that's exactly the same, except that I added shulker box unloaders on top. So here you put in shulker boxes of logs, for example, and shulker boxes of cobble. And at the bottom, I have used a shulker box loader. The unloaders are from Summerster Sage. The shulker box loader is from Glotz. So the items will go directly to shulker boxes. And then if the shulker box is broken, go into this output here. And I have kept the buffer chests here. Now, this is a bit more work if you want to switch the item that you craft and remove the ingredients. But on the other hand, in many cases, I just need a few stacks. For example, let's say I need 20 stacks of soul lanterns. Then I don't want to set up everything with shulker boxes. But instead, I want to have something like this, where I can just chuck in the ingredients into the chests. And this is something I can do here, so the shulker box unloaders would remain empty. And I don't have to use them. And for the output, that's okay to have the output in a shulker box. I will usually put them in shulker boxes anyway to move them somewhere. Okay, and this is the whole setup. And the flexibility comes from the different ways you can use it. So let's look at a few examples. In the first example, I will walk you through how you set up this. So the first step, of course, is to empty all of the chests, empty the crafter. Let's say we want to craft these firework stars. This gives a very nice firework, like so. So the first step is to configure the crafter. So block off the slots that you don't need and put in the ingredients. Now, for a firework star, you need gunpowder, you need a color, and then come the optional ingredients. And instead of fire charges, you could use gold nuggets. You could just put in the ingredients directly here. So color. And then here you would have the nuggets and you could craft down ingots and you could craft down diamond blocks. So basically you fill this with diamond blocks and here you put in the gunpowder. Now the crafter is pre-filled, but the clock here is not yet enabled as long as we configure the ingredients. So put in the glowstone, put in the yellow dye. And now we wanted gold nuggets, we could use just decompression here, but instead we want to use fire charges. We have to get rid of this pre-processing step and we can just replace this crafter with a hopper that goes in here. 
and then put in the fire chargers. However, the way we have set up this block here, this will block this hopper because if the clock is on, this hopper will be locked. This will make the thing too slow. So in addition, we'll just take out this repeater here. And now this block is not powered. The hopper is enabled and will transfer the item at hopper speed. So as to the clock, this is a bit of a tricky one. We need one of each ingredients for the fire star. We could craft the items at hopper speed because all of the ingredients come in at hopper speed and we need one of each. However, this clock does not allow hopper speed. The fastest you can set it is 0.6 seconds. Otherwise, this redstone torch will burn out. So you have two options. First option is to go a bit slower, to craft once every 0.6 seconds. Or you put in another clock that is faster. For example, this one here works exactly at hopper speed, but is less configurable. So there's only one repeater in there. So personally, I will just go with that one here. 0.6 seconds still means we can craft 6,000 items per hour, which is quite fast. And of course, for the diamonds, I should have enabled the clock so that the diamonds come in. Okay, this works. And the final step is just to enable the clock to start crafting. And that's it. Firework stars done. Next. Next is sea lanterns. So this is the recipe, five crystals and four shards. And we will just use two input chests for each of the ingredients. So we have shards and two chests and crystals and two chests. We have disabled the pre-processing here, replaced it with a hopper as we had before. And the three chests here go directly into the crafter. So this is easy. The only question is how should we set the clock? And we feed the item with double hopper speed because we have two hoppers inputting items. So we get one item of each type every 0.2 seconds, but we need five items for the crystals. So we need one second to refill the crystals. So we need a one second clock or a five tick half clock. So we have one tick, two ticks and two more ticks. So this is the right clock at five redstone ticks. And you see crafting happens and all of the ingredients are refilled. Very nice. Sea lanterns done. Next. Let's also do a dark prismarine as a bonus. In this case, we can use four lines for the prismarine shards and one pre-processing line for the ink sacks. So we enter the shards with four times hopper speed. And that means we need 0.8 seconds to refill the crafter. That means we need a clock that has a half cycle of 0.4 seconds. So this works. And we get dark prismarine. You can also craft bones to bone block. And here we only use the decompression lines. So they will first be turned into bone meal and then crafted to bone blocks. In this case, we need a clock of 1.8 seconds or the full nine redstone tick delay. And the output are bone blocks. Of course, the setup is not very fast, not nearly fast enough to keep up with a wither skeleton farm or something like that. In a past video, I showed you a dedicated system that is much, much faster in crafting bones to bone blocks. Okay, deep slate tiles. Deep slate tiles are a bit more complicated. As I explained, we need three steps, but we can do it in two steps actually. So first, we just use one input to put in the cobbled deep slate and we have set up the crafter. And we set the clock again to 1.6 seconds for the full cycle. We could bring in the items much faster. After all, we could feed the items using five hoppers. But of course, the bottleneck is the output. So this is also just hopper speed. Four cobble deep slate will give four polished deep slate. One crafting cycle creates four items. We need 1.6 seconds to put them in the chest. And even worse, we can't have to set up here because this would strongly power this dropper and lock this hopper. So in this case, you can see the items are not pushed out. So what we just do, we knock out this hopper for a moment, just for this recipe. Then we knock out this repeater, put in another solid block. So the crafter will be weakly powered, so none of the adjacent hoppers will be locked. And then just place a piece of redstone dust here. And now the items can be sucked out. And if we enable the clock now, we should see that the items are refilled. And here the items are transported away. So this is the first step, we get polished deep slate. And then the second step, we do two craftings at once and we input the polished deep slate into one of the pre-processing lines. 
And we have set this crafter to four items and not one. So this crafter will create deep slate bricks. And we have now two crafting steps and two clocks. We need to set them to the same amount to eight redstone ticks. Let's take out of your items. If we start this clock, you will see that the items come in at hopper speed, but in batches of four. And the crafter will be filled with, with the bricks, which give the tiles. So now you start a second clock. And there we go. We get deep slate tiles. Once again, we power the crafter like this and not strongly power the dropper. We only need to power the dropper strongly if we have five ingredients, if we need this hopper. Otherwise, we can always power it like this. Deep slate tiles done. Next. And the final example will be soul lanterns. And here we need a two-step process again. First, we craft the soul torches from soul sand, coal and sticks. And so basically you have two options. The soul sand must be provided in any case. Now the coal and the sticks could be provided like this. But I prefer actually to craft the sticks like so and the coal. So what we need is a preprocessor for the coal that works like this. And here the clock is pretty much irrelevant. This is slower than hopper speed, but it will generate nine items. But for the sticks, we need to take a bit more care because we run out of planks, then we might create buttons here. But this clock here is set to four redstone ticks total, three from the repeaters, one from the redstone torch. So it fires once every 0.8 seconds. And this means our input hopper has enough time to refill the items. And all works out. Here at the bottom, again, the question is the timing. For each crafting process, we get four soul torches. So whenever the clock is fired once, we need to remove four items. So once again, 1.6 seconds for the clock, or eight redstone ticks delay is the correct answer, because this gives the hopper enough time to remove the items and put them in the chest here. The second step is to craft these torches to soul lanterns. And in this case, we'll just use both decompression lines to craft iron ingots to iron nuggets. And in the middle, we provide the soul torches that we just crafted. And in this case, we get only one item per crafting process. So this could be hopper speed. However, the bottleneck are the iron ingots. We have two hoppers feeding into the crafter. So we once again need 1.6 seconds to replace the iron nuggets. So Again, this clock is one 1.6 seconds, like so often. This is just slow enough that the hoppers can keep up. And we get soul lanterns. In the meantime, I have built a setup on my survival server. Don't mind the lack of decoration. The smelter here will be removed. This was just temporary. And then I'll be able to build a nice building around my factory and the crafter. So this is the crafting central. And here on top, I can access the shulker box loaders or here I can access the ingredient chests and the clock for configuration. And I tweak the output so the shulker boxes will end up here. And I just added a standard item elevator here. And right now I'm crafting a few seed lanterns. Everything is nice and accessible. I can reconfigure the clocks, I can access the crafter and I ac can access all of the ingredient chests here. The only thing that's missing is something to automatically eject the shaker box when I'm done. Because right now this is something I have to do manually. But that's not a big issue, I think. So, have you played with the crafter already? Do you want to see more crafting setups? And which ones? Perhaps faster ones or more specialized? Let me know in the comments. Also, please subscribe and share. It helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.